Well, it's a Tuesday afternoon, and we're gonna talk about 25 fixed plates. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today on the table, we have a whole lot of fixed blade knives. Why do we have a bunch of fixed blade knives? Because we are doing the definitive fixed blade knives buyer's guide. So on the table, we have some recommendations in varying price points and for varying purposes. In each price bracket from zero to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 150, 150 to 200 and 200 plus, we have a, a selection of knives that are great for outdoors slash bushcrafting, camping, hunting, whatever. We have a definitive hunting knife. We have an everyday carry, a tactical option, and maybe some wild cards in there, here and there. But with no further ado, let's get started on the very budget end in the sub 50 category with the knife that is the gold standard of budget fixed blades, the Mora Knives Companion. So Mora, this is standing in for the whole Mora line. You could make a point that the basic 511, which you can often find for under $10, is one of the best bushcraft knives that you can get for the money out there. But I chose this Mora because I really like the heavy duty companion. It's got a bit of a thicker blade than we're used to, but it comes in a carbon steel and a stainless steel, a very nice snap fitting sheath, just a really great all around knife. And if you are only gonna get one knife or you're just barely starting out and you're not sure what you're looking for and you're looking under the $50 price point, I seriously recommend Amora. There are a ton of options, a ton of colors, made in Sweden, built for a lifetime. They are way too good to be the price they are. Next up, we have the CRKT Minimalist Series. Now we got this black one because black is fun. This is your everyday carry option in this bracket because it is super small. It is neck knife supreme. I think this is the gold standard of neck knife size because it fits your hand just right. You can get three fingers in there and then wrap your pinky around the lanyard there. Got a nice blade. It comes in a bunch of different blade shapes from very small. In fact, there's like a three inch long katana variant now and it has a nice kydex sheath. And when it's on your neck, it is very slim, very easy to carry, and you can just grab it and go to work. Next up in the sub $50 category in the hunting section, we have the Spyderco Bow River. This thing has become very popular lately because A, it's a Spyderco, which means you get the warranty service and the great quality control and attention to detail that you get out of Spyderco but you also get it at a very budget friendly price point with this nice smooth G10 handle, a tough and stainless 8CR13 MOV blade, which is so easy to sharpen, you can pick up a rock out of a stream and do it. A great fishing knife, hunting knife, or even around camp knife, but it's a very thin blade, which has a little bit of flex to it. So you can squeeze it into all those rolls, but I chose it as a hunting knife because I would have no trouble taking down a deer with this thing. Nice leather sheath as well with a plastic insert to make sure you're not gonna cut your way out of it. A very classy option, but a powerful hunting knife for under $50. Next up in the tactical sphere, I went with the Cold Steel SRK. So this is the SRK Compact, which is a little bit shorter, but I have a story for you. Once upon a time, my father-in-law was having a bit of a hard time with my mother-in-law because he kept stealing the kitchen knives and using them in the garden. So for Father's Day, I got him this SRK right here. This one's the big one. He's like, that's too nice to use in the garden. And I'm like, it's very nice knife. It feels like it's too nice to use in the garden. And it is, maybe. But it's seriously very affordable. I paid less than $50 for this big six inch fixed blade SK5 steel. And he, as you can see, has beat the tar out of it in his garden. And I asked him if I could borrow it for this video and he said, yeah, go ahead, just bring it back sharp because it is so hilariously dull right now. <laughs> but the SRK is a really great option for under $50, especially as like a survival knife. SRK actually stands for survival and rescue knife. And it really lends itself well to that application. And it has a nice secure X sheath, snaps in pretty well and a great secondary retention option. So if you wanted to lash this to your pack or on your belt or maybe go horizontal with it, whatever you want to do, the SRK can do it. And it comes in two sizes and a few different colors. A really, really great knife for under $50. Next up, the knife I recommend for most of these uh, applications is my personal garden knife, is the Rake Knives Hornet. 14C28N blade with a cryogenic heat treat. Holds a great edge and it's tough as nails. Full tang and these G10 scales, but it's skeletonized all the way through. So it's very light in the hand and it has this nice sheath and it comes with a very unique clip too. So what you do is you hit this button and this clip will rotate. So whatever carry style you like, you can pretty much accom you can accommodate it without having to change anything. But if you want, you can remove the clip, move it to the other side 
maybe run it as a neck knife, whatever you're doing, the Rake Knife Hornet can do it. And it is super, super well built. And then lastly, in this budget category, we have the Cold Steel Urban Edge. So these have been very popular. And I think it's because if you are looking for a self-defense knife, when things get hairy, if you have trained in martial arts at all, all you have to do is put this in your hand like so, and then your same blocks and everything still work. You don't have to learn a new martial art involving an edge tool. It's also very light, very slim. It's got this flat back, so it's easy to tuck against your leg if you're gonna run it as a boot knife or whatever. But a very interesting knife, and it's very popular. And I think it's because it's so small and easy to carry. So if you're looking for something that is like takes up even less of a footprint than your folder. Check out the Cold Steel Urban Edge. It's a push dagger, but it's a lot of fun. In fact, I find that it, with your hands like this, you can move the table or whatever. You can still use your hands with a knife in it, which is really a nice feature. So that is the sub $50 price point. Next up, we're going a little bit higher into the $50 to $100, starting with the Maverick Customs designed Blade HQ exclusive mini harpoon. And not only is this a very nice designed knife, but it uses a special steel called CPM-10V. It's a carbon steel, so it'll rust on you if you're not careful, but it offers off the charts edge retention, far excelling much more expensive stainless steels. And it is super thin, light, and compact. And it is a mini version of another knife. So here we have the full-size harpoon. This one's got a D2 blade, and this one has a micarta handle as well. These are great everyday carry fixed blades because they are just so well-sized, great ergonomics. They have a custom maker behind them who is known for making interesting but functional designs. So check out the, the Harpoon Mini Blade HQ exclusives. These won't be around forever, but the big size will. Next up, we have the tactical option here, which is the Gerber Strong Arm. So the Gerber Strong Arm came out in 2015, and ever since it has been a perennial bestseller fixed blade for military people especially because it is tough as nails. So it uses 420 HC steel, and that stuff, it's a bit of a bad rap because it doesn't have great edge retention, but it's easy to sharpen, once again, pick up a rock and do it, but it is crazy tough, tougher than some of these high-end carbon steels we're gonna see over here. And it is also great in corrosion resistance, it's never gonna rust on you. That's this over-molded rubber handle that grips the hand very nicely, and one of my favorite features is this sheet. So the sheath is ambidextrous, so I'm just gonna pick the knife up, rotate it this way. Still snaps in just right. And if you look at the back here, it has this nylon loop to keep on your belt or your pack, what have you. But it also has this scenario back here. So this little shim here can make it attached to molly webbing, but it can also attach it to this belt loop to make it run horizontal on your back or on your front, whatever you're doing. It is a sheath that right out of the box can be applied to whatever role you want it to do which a lot of military guys really like because they have a belt, they have very well set up, they wanna make sure their knife fits well into it, and this can do it right out of the box. No mods, no special sheets. Next up in sort of our bushcrafty vibe, I grabbed the Essie Azula. So this is a very small knife. It's made of 1095 steel, but you can also get the S35VN, fancy stainless version, at the same price point. And it is very small. It was originally designed as a neck knife, but I've seen people do it on belts, I've seen people do it on boots. Very nice thing. And it comes in a bunch of different colors and it has the SE warranty. So that's a very important thing to talk about because SE offers knives at great prices. These are around 60 to $80, depending on who, what, when, where, why. But you can beat the tar out of these things. You can take this tiny knife and try to baton through seasoned hickory and it'll break if it does. If it does break, it probably won't. 1095 is very tough. But if it does break, you can send it to SE and they will warranty it, no questions asked. They pride themselves on their no questions asked warranty. And that is one of the great things you're getting with SE. And they're really great knives. And this one, you can get handles, you can do a paracord wrap. Whatever you feel like doing, the SE Azula can do it. And that's what I love about fixed blades. I've said that a million times. Fixed blades are do everything knives. One of the reasons you're buying one in the first place is because it's so much stronger. I've heard that folders are pre-broken in the middle. Like even my folder, I have the Cold Steel Formax Scout here and it has a very strong lock. One of the strongest there is, the Triad lock. But if I'm going surviving or whatever I'm doing outdoors and I'm gonna be abusing my knife a little bit, sign me up for a fixed blade because I trust that more than I would trust any lock. Anyway, next up in the hunting option, we have the Buck 119. 
So if this looks a little familiar to you, it's probably because this is one of the most popular hunting knives ever made. It comes from Buck, which has been around for almost a century now, making USA-made knives that are just so well-built and well-designed for the everyday person. It doesn't get too fancy, but it can if you want it to, and you can really get out there and use it. It's got a nice big handle that'll never give you a blister, this deep hollow grind that slices very well, and once again, that 420 steel, same used here, but it has the Buck Knives Boss Heat Treat. Buck Knives has somehow mastered this steel, this 420 steel. Even though you have that same steel that's on the Gerber, you're getting a lot of edge retention, a crazy amount of edge retention for this steel. They get every last drop out of their steels with their heat treat system. And what I love about it is you can get these knives very well built with a long history and having taken the skin off of more white tail than you could ever imagine. Knives like this for under $100. Truly an incredible value from Buck Knives. USA made as well. Speaking of USA made, long history and great value, let's talk about the K-Bar. So if you've ever spent some time around a United States Marine, they will tell you the legends of the K-Bar. The, the K-Bar first found its way into the hands of Marines in World War II, and it quickly established its reputation as one of the best combat and utility knives ever made. And the design really hasn't changed much over the years. You still have that stacked leather handle. You still have that 1095 blade, this nice fuller, which keeps the weight down. It's tough as nails, and it's built for whatever it is you're up to. And it comes stock with this leather sheath, but you can find some other options. And over the years, it's also been updated a little bit. You can still get the classic, which for sure is not broken. But one thing that you can do is there's even a mini version now, like we have here. And this one has a rubberized handle and it's a bit smaller, a little bit more easy to carry. Since that first time in World War II, the K-Bar has found its way to every branch and onto belts of soldiers all over the world. And it has proven itself on the battlefield, the modern battlefield, more than any knife I can think of. And it, once again, for under $100, you're getting a knife with that kind of reputation, that kind of history, and made in the USA. Next up, we're gonna go to the next bracket up, which is the $100 to $150 price point. And this is where we're gonna start seeing some interesting phenomenon in this pattern of knives that we're developing. Fixed blades are a lot easier to manufacture than folders. And because of that, you're gonna start, like, for a folder, it's very easy to see north of $500 for a perfectly built, well-designed everything folder because you have to get all these parts to work together. With a fixed blade, you have to get the blade to be perfect and you have to get the handles on. And because of that, fixed blades are just cheaper than folders. And that's another great option. If you're looking for a great outdoor use knife and you don't wanna spend the money on a very well-built folder, you can get a very well-built fixed blade like this SE4 for a lot cheaper. So the SE4 is, I grabbed it because it's one of the most iconic outdoor survival knives there is. It's just the right size and these are the new 3D Micom. 3D contour G10 handles. Got a nice forward finger choil if you wanna do some more carving on it. And just like this Azula, it has that incredible warranty. Smash it to bits and they will warranty it all day long. And the other thing I'll tell you is Essie is actually this company's side hustle. Randall's Adventure and Training started Essie to make knives up to their spec. Randall's Adventure and Training's full-time job is teaching people survival skills, rescue skills, search and rescue, Swift Water, whatever you're doing, they're doing it and they're teaching it. And that is their main job. But on the side, they make some really awesome knives too. And you can see, this has the DNA of real experts in the field. It's got the right handle, it's got the right blade. It may not be the prettiest knife out there, but it is known and it has a reputation of being one of the best for outdoor use. And once again, back to that incredible warranty and available in a premium stainless version as well. Although that one bumps the price up just a little bit. Next up is our everyday carry option in this price bracket. We have the Bradford Knives Guardian 3. So it's kind of hard to talk about everyday carry fixed blades and not bring up Bradford. They're made in the United States. They come in a wide variety of blade steels. I've seen them as inexpensive as D2 and as expensive as Magna Cut. This one uses Bowler N690, which is a nice tough stainless steel. And I love these because of this handle. So the choil fits your index finger and the rest of your hand fits there and it just grips very nice, and your finger is right up against the edge, right here, ready to cut or carve or whatever you're doing. I can see this fitting the role of a folder really well, especially with this leather sheath that it comes with, designed for horizontal carry, so I would probably wear it on my belt, maybe right here, then I can just grab it, and then I'm ready to go. Really great if you're sitting down too and your pocket's kind of folded up. Yeah, Bradford Guardian 3, it comes in a few different handle varieties as well. 
I personally like on this size, these checkered G10, but it also has a 3D contour G10 or micarta, if that's your jam. And it comes in so many blade steels, so many blade shapes, bunch of different finishes. There is not a person alive who cannot find a Bradford Guardian 3 they don't like. Next up in the tactical sphere, we have the Topps Knives Cat. This is the first instance of Topps we're gonna see. They're made in Idaho, a premium USA made company that really pays attention to the details on all of their knives. And you're gonna see a lot of them a little bit more later on. They make a lot of premium knives. And I really like the cat because it fills out the hand just right. And the first time I ever heard of this, I was forget who I was watching on YouTube, but he said, I like the Topps cat because of this sheath. So on the sheath, there's this clip that you can bend around this way. And what the fella had is he had his sheath and he'd mounted it inside his tactical belt. He was a military guy. And they have these big belts that have webbing and everything to attach their pistol and their extra magazines to. And he had this on the inside and he says, it doesn't take up any belt space, but I can really just easily grab my knife. And CAT stands for Compact Anti-Terrorism. So it was definitely made for the war on terror to not weigh down the soldiers, but it's a great everyday carry tactical knife. It could be used outdoors. And I especially like this handle texture. So a long time ago when they were designing this knife, there was a glitch in the machine that made this texture. And they're like, hey, that actually works really well. And it looks cool too. And so the texture here, which I always call it the eye of Sauron texture, but I've heard it called cat eye or something else. But it's a fun texture. It really grips the handle and has a cool story behind it too. And once again, USA made to the highest standards and available for under $150. If you want to talk about available for under $50 that is a little unbelievable, check out this next guy. This is the K-Bar Becker BK2. So, oof, I just cut myself. You okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Well, that was embarrassing. The K-Bar Becker BK2. So K-Bar we mentioned earlier, they make the fighting utility knife that is so popular. They teamed up with custom knife maker Ethan Becker to design a line of knives that are just overbuilt. So this is a quarter inch thick 1095 steel, and it comes all the way down to this big hammer pommel, and it has these huge handles that are just great for gripping and gripping on. And a nice snap fit sheath as well. This thing is an absolute beast of a blade. And I said this in the camping video a little while ago. I would like to meet the man or the bear that can snap this knife, like just and it's sort of a tactical survival option, a sharpened pry bar, as many have called it. A very cool knife, and once again, for a very reasonable price. And lastly, in the hunting category, we're back with Buck. And this is sort of the Buck modern take. So back in the day, they made the 119, which is still a great hunting knife, but this is the Pursuit Pro Large. So this has a Boss Heat Treated S35VN blade, this rubberized handle, and a kind of deep sweepy belly here with a very nice hollow grind. This thing will break down your deer all day long. I don't care how big the moose is, this thing will still be shaving sharp after you've broken the whole thing down. This is actually Dallas's, my buddy Dallas and the buying team. This is his favorite hunting knife and he's broken down who knows how many deer, lent it to his brother for the same purpose and he's never sharpened it and it can still pop hairs. They do a really good job with this. And USA made for under $150. That is incredible. You don't see that on folders. You don't see anything even close to that on folders. Next up, 150 to 200, and we're gonna get into the big game of Benchmade. Benchmade is very known for their folders. Like the Bug Out is one of the best selling knives of all time. But this right here is the Puko, which is sort of a bushcrafty style knife. And this one uses a CPM 3V blade. And 3V is one of my favorite steels. It's a powder steel, meaning it uses some special metallurgical practices to make it get harder, tougher, and better edge retention. And it is so well done with this nice rubberized handle that is over molded onto the blade itself. So you're never gonna encounter steel. So if you're out in the winter, you're not gonna accidentally freeze your hand to the blade, which happens sometimes. Then a nice leather sheath. And this is a time I wanna talk about sheaths. In the bushcraft community, especially when you start getting into brands like Bark River and LT Wright, which by the way, my bushcrafting friends, I apologize. We don't really have any of those in stock right now, so I was unable to bring them to the table. But if you're looking at fixed blades and you see a Bark River or an LT Wright or a Battle Horse or all these other brands of USA made boutique knives, jump on them. They are great. I do not dislike them. They're just not here because we don't have them in stock right now because you guys keep buying them. These leather sheaths have a few options. One that is the traditional loop right here, which you can run, it'll sit pretty high on your hip. But what's become popular lately is this dangler loop. So you get this loop right here and you loop that around and then the sheath will kind of dangle on your leg. And that means if you're kneeling down, which you bushcrafters know, you're kneeling a lot. 
In fact, they'll wear knee pads just to protect their knees. That allows the knife to still hang down so you don't have to do anything weird to get to your knife. It's not stabbing you in the side while you're leaning over. But if you get the Benchmade Puko, you have a nice fire steel loop, you have this dangler or this high ride. It's gonna be easy for you to carry no matter what you're doing. You can choose your own adventure and learn your bushcraft tastes. And that way, if you ever wanna get into one of those bigger, more expensive knives, you know exactly what you want. Next up, we have the Topps Sabo Express. Now this is the tactical knife if I've ever seen one. It's Topps knives again, just like the cat was, but this one's a little bit bigger and it is a, let's face it, this is a, this is a self-defense and tactical combat knife. It's got two edges, it's got a very sharp point, and this handle angle makes it so it angles the blade just a little bit forward. So if you're doing any stabbing or thrusting or back cutting, or you're going reverse grip, whatever you're doing, this knife can do it. I'm not a knife fighter, but I know that they teamed up with knife fighters to make this thing, and it is a really incredible beast of a knife. And look at that sheath. Just a perfect Kydex fit with a nice snap in there and a nice clip. Next up, we have the SOG, or SOG, I guess I'm allowed to call it now, Pillar. So, SOG is known for its tactical knives, and this is my personal favorite but I don't know that I would call it a tactical knife. I think it can definitely squeeze into that role if you want it to, but this is a camping knife for me. And what I love about it is that S35VN steel again, which is a very premium stainless steel, definitely well suited to a blade of this size, but it's USA made with this nice micarta handle and this finger choil if you want to choke up and do any more of that carving, skinning, what have you. On the back, it's got this pommel, so you can pound a tent peg if you need to, and this sheath is super well done. You got these grommets, kind of well recessed, so you're, it, it doesn't keep any weight it doesn't need. So this whole package is a great tactical knife, but it also is a great backpacking knife, I would think, because it's just so light, but when it's in your hand, it is very well suited to whatever tasks you would ask of a five inch fixed blade. So for all you campers out there, check out the SOG pillar, and don't sleep on SOG as a brand. They've got a lot of cool stuff coming, in fact, this year at SHOT Show, they announced some really cool, very compact, very lightweight fixed blades for hunting. Check out those when they come along the way. Speaking of small, compact, lightweight fixed blades for hunting, because I actually put this one in the EDC category, but this one's the caper. So caping is a hunting term used for very precise cuts around things that might be a little more dangerous to your meat or to you or to things that you really just don't want to be part of your meat. But this is from the M1 series from White River, which the in fact, in the Backpacker line, which has the same blade, just the different handle, it's either a Paracord Raptor G10, you can find them for under $150. But these are really great everyday carry fixed blades. I, I have a caper, mine has a different micarta on it, but I wear it as a neck knife. But this one, I love because of this little rounded area right there by your finger. So when you put your finger in that choil right there, it feels so comfortable and it just locks you in really well. You have great control of the knife. It's easy to maneuver, it's very light, and look at this sheath. Much like the pillar sheath, this one does not have too much extra material. So it's not gonna weigh you down, it's gonna be just enough, and then it comes with a belt loop as well, for in case you wanna run it on your belt, but I, I personally see this as a neck knife, and it is my favorite neck knife of all of my little fixed blades. S35 VN steel, made in the USA, and backed by a really great warranty as well. I love me some White River knives, don't sleep on them either. They're a brand that we don't talk about as much because they often are small batch. I mean, it's a mom and pop shop, but when their knives come in, they tend to go fast because they're really, really great, well-built knives. And then in the hunting category, we're gonna come back and you're gonna say, wait, I thought we already saw the Buck 119. And you're right, we did. But the 119 Pro is available in this price category too. The 119 Pro is just like the 119 you've seen, but it has a micarta handle. My card is a special laminate of like fabrics and a resin. So it feels clothy in your hand and it only gets grippier when it's wet. And then that bossy treated S35 VN blade instead of 420 here. Gives you a lot more edge retention. Made in the USA of the finest materials around. It's the knife you grew up learning on. The knife you skinned your first deer with, but it is just a little bit more premium. Okay, and by a little bit, I mean a lot more premium. It's much superior materials. For once again, not too much money, under $150 you have this incredible knife. We have made it to our final price bracket, starting with the Falkneven S1X. The hardcore bushcrafters love them some Falkneven, and I can really see why. Um, we actually did an interview a little while ago with a guy named Kevin Estella. 
he is a survival instructor. And when he picked this thing up, he says, I have seen so many people with these, and I will tell you, this is one of the best survival knives ever made. And that is high praise coming from a man whose literal job is to teach people how to survive. And you can really see why. So this has a convex grind. So not getting too much into grinds, that means that it doesn't have what we call a speed bump. So on a traditional edge, you have an edge corner like here, and then it goes to this, and there's a little corner right there where the edge meets. But with this, it is like an apple seed. It just curves straight out. And even though it's a very thick knife, because of that grind, this thing slices incredibly well, effortlessly through wood, through food, through paper, whatever it is you're cutting. And it uses this special laminate COS steel. So the, the, the X series does. There's cheaper versions of it, but this is the premium, the finest of them. And if you look very closely, you might not be able to catch it on camera here, there's a very faint line about a half an inch back from the edge that runs all the way through. And that's the weld line. So inside it uses a very hard steel that can hold an edge all day long. You'll never dull it when you're cutting out, when you're out in the woods. But on the outside, you have this very tough, very stain resistant stainless steel. So that way you're not gonna break the knife if you're smashing it through wood or whatever, but you're also gonna have the incredible edge retention of a much harder, but not quite as tough steel. And then this sheath, is one of the most secure sheaths I've ever felt. When it locks in, you grab this little tab, you pull it down, and the sheet, and that is locked in there. You, you're not getting that out at all. And then a nice belt loop as well. These are very premium knives, and you cannot go wrong with one. Next up, I have the Reef Knives F3. So this stands in for the whole Reef Knives brand, and this is sort of the crossover tactical EDC world, or outdoor in the bigger ones but they use a 3B blade, a G10 handle, and they are just so well built right here in the United States. I met the guy Stu who started it all, and he's a woodsman and he's just like, I want to make a knife that I would carry every single day, out in the woods or out on the road, and that's what he did with the reef knives. And they are made in the USA under, under the most ethical circumstances of the finest materials around. They have really great sheaths that just snap right into place and they have nice polished spines on the back so it's not gonna hurt your thumb. But if you wanna scrape that ferro rod, just check out this whole section right here, right by the lanyard hole. That'll throw your sparks all day long. The reef knives are ones to look at if you're looking at premium, top of the line fixed blades made in the USA. Next up, for all you guys out there who you know wear your Danner boots and carry your Filson bag and your Christensen Arms rifle into the woods because you like to have the best of the best for your hunting kit, check out the Benchmade Knives Raghorn. So this uses the CPM Crewwear blade steel, and that's one we haven't seen much of. In fact, we haven't seen any of it on this table, but it has incredible edge retention and some off the charts toughness. If you look how thin that blade is, you would think, I would never crack a deer sternum with that, but you could because of how tough this steel is and it's got this full carbon fiber handle which keeps the weight way down, it also looks really good. And then a very high vis orange that'll stand out against the ground or whatever you're carrying. You're never gonna lose this knife. And the sheath has that too. This is the knife for he who has it all. It is a very premium hunting knife that can get you through any hunt, any tag, any season, in any world. And we actually have a few other versions coming announced by Benchmade this year. We have one with an OD Green G10 handle and an S30V blade, which is a stainless, if you're more into that. And just a great hunting knife. And check out a lot of the Benchmade hunting knives. They have been really swinging for the fence lately on their hunting lineup, and you cannot go wrong with any of them. Next up in the tactical sphere on this one, we have the Dirty Bird Knives Aguila. So one thing that I found a little bit difficult is finding knives around this size in this price point. Because as we mentioned earlier, fixed blades are just cheaper to make. So the vast majority of three-ish inch fixed blade knives designed for everyday carry fall way below this price point because there's no reason for them to be that expensive under most circumstances. Now this one has a few extra tricks up its sleeve that earn at the price point. It's got this very nice 3D mill G10 handle and this S30V blade has a swedge along the back and a very precise point. I don't envy the man or woman whose job it is to grind this knife because you have to get so close to that tip that is so sharp without burning the steel. It takes a, it takes a real master to make a knife quite like this one. And it comes with a nice Kydex sheath as well and an ulti clip, which is another thing. If you are looking at ways to carry your fixed blade knife, 
keep the name Ulti Clip in the back of your head because these are very strong and you can attach them to the webbing of your pack, to your belt, to your pocket, whatever you have, an Ulti Clip can stick to it. The Dirty Bird Aguila uses that S30, S35VN steel as well. And it is just a slim, but very tactical, very self-defense and everyday carry oriented knife. And you cannot go wrong with the Dirty Bird Aguila. And the last knife on the table, I saved the one that I might pick for last. If I could only have one knife on the table, it might be this one. I'll have to think on that one and no one wants to watch that, but I'll just tell you about it. This is the Benchmade Knives Adamus Fixed Blade. So it uses that same crew wear blade that was on the Raghorn a moment ago. But this one's quite a bit thicker than that. It's definitely a sort of tactical survival knife but you're gonna notice it doesn't have any handle scales and you can find some, or I think what they would rather you do is they have you wrap it in paracord. That gives you a little bit more versatility in terms of what you can do. But what I love about this is when it's in its sheath, it snaps in and it's a very thin package. And you can use this little snap here to wrap around the blade to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then that right there is a very slim thing that you can just slide in your pack and it probably weighs less than a quarter of a pound. So you're not gonna notice it if you're carrying. I know those military guys, like those weapons and ammo get so heavy. Not to mention the water and radio equipment you're carrying. You do not wanna be spending too many ounces on a big fixed blade. Sure, you'd love to have the Becker BK2, but it is so big and so heavy, well north of a pound. But this thing is so slim and so light, you can just slip it in your pack, but then when you need it, you can pull it out and you have a real fixed blade, a full size thing that'll fill out your handle that you can do all your work with. That is 25 really awesome fixed blades. Was that 25? That might've been more. 26. 26 fixed blades. That's a whole lot of them. We hope you've sort of got some inspiration. Check out all of these knives at Blade HQ, but if you're looking in the right size brackets and on the right price, I hope this has shown you, you can find a fixed blade knife that will fit your needs, your style, and your budget. Thank you for joining us. Check out all these knives and more at bladehq.com and we'll see you on the next one.